Welcome to our first ever Southeast Functional Skills webinar for our employers and employees across the um, Southeast um, primary care sector, so GP practices and primary care networks. You're joined today by our training hubs and, and what I'll do is I'll start by um, making some introductions. So my name is Hazel Redmond and I work within the Kent and Medway Primary Care Training Hub as the Nursing Apprenticeship Lead and it's lovely to see you all here today. Hello. Hi, um, I'm Rose Miller. I'm the Apprenticeship Lead for the Sussex Training Hub. Um, so I cover all of Sussex, um, including Brighton Hove, East and West. So yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, I'm Kelly, um, work for Surrey Training Hub, uh, supporting apprentices across Surrey Heartlands. Hi, thank you, Kirsch. I'm Annika Biggington. I'm Workforce Development Lead for Surrey Training Hub and work alongside Kelly. Lovely, thank you. Elaine? I'm Elaine Lancaster. I work for Health Education England and I am the South East Apprenticeship Relationship Manager. So I'm your go-to whether you're an employer or a training hub um, if you need any information about anything related to apprenticeships. Just to say thank you so much um, to Elaine Lancaster, who is joining us from Health Education England, to share and help to kind of unpick the amount of information that is out there about functional skills. But what we find as a collective um, in our training hubs is that People are afraid of um, starting some of the skills. So as soon as you said, I want to do an apprenticeship, I want to develop as a nursing associate, or I want to do my management leadership, you know, whatever it is, we have the conversation around maths and English functional skills. Um, people sometimes are reluctant to go down that journey because of experiences that you might have had in the past with it. You thought you left maths in particular at school you know really this session is about just breaking some of those myths and breaking some of this down and showing you the wealth of support that's out there so we're going to start with Elaine's presentation and then we're going to go into some live examples so we have Rebecca and Deepika who have approached their function skills in slightly different ways so they can show you their lived experience of and then a chance for questions and answers so I'm going to hand over to Elaine Thanks, Kirsch. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, functional skills generally and how functional skills can support you as an employer and your individuals um, to obtain fun functional skills. Um, next slide, please, Rose. I've shared these with Kush as well, and I'm happy for them to be shared afterwards. So let's start at the very beginning. I'm going to assume more relatively new to the functional skills agenda rather than make any assumptions about people's knowledge. They are um, post-16 qualifications, so they're designed specifically for adult learners um, in literacy, numeracy and digital skills. So that's English, maths and digital, digital skills covers everything around using a computer and using the internet and things like that. Um, functional skills, um, are different from maths and English and we'll do a little bit more detail of that later um, and it's really to help you make maths and English relevant to the real world. Um, it's about giving you practical skills for real life situations um, and I always think functional skills are something we should all be doing regardless of where you are in your career whether you're doing it for an apprenticeship or it's part of an apprenticeship um, because it gives you those skills to make you um, feel more comfortable in work and outside of work. Um, functional skills level two is a level two qualification. So we quite often talk about level two, level three. Level two qualification is the same academic level as a GCSE. Uh, next slide, please, Rose. So here's a little bit of difference between GCSE math and functional skills maths. So I'm sure a lot of us remember in maths sitting there thinking, I'm never going to use algebra, what's trigonometry? Um, I was in the bottom set for math, so my teacher just sort of will sco scoot over this, Elaine. Um, instead of doing lots of things like that in functional skills, use the skills that are important for real life, such as addition, subtraction, um, fractions. So, for example, when you go out to the shops and someone says, this is a third off something, and then you look at it and go, it's a third off better than two for one. Those kind of things. Probability, 
um, that's not really covered as much. Uh, we look at things like distance, uh, weight, volume and temperature, stuff that you will need in the real world. Um, if we've got any maths fans amongst us, I know algebra and trigonometry do have an application to the real world. Um, um, things like mean, median and mode are quite often used um, in the news, so you can learn about those um, and what they mean to everyday life. Um, next slide, please, Rose. So GCSE English and functional skills English. Again, functional skills is a lot more functional. It's a lot more practical. Um, in GCSE English, you would have been reading fiction and non-fiction texts. And there's a lot of creative writing. Functional skills English is much more about the English that most of us need in our day to day life. Again, I'm not dismissing GCSEs. There's obviously a place for things like creative writing and narrative writing. But for the purposes of adults trying to lift themselves to a new level, these are the bits that are important. So it's about things like writing style. So the way I would send maybe um, if I was sending a text to my husband, that writing style would be very different to if I was sending an email to say Kush or Rose, although sometimes they're quite the same. Um, if you were speaking to a seat like an organisation or you were asking the local council about, I don't know, your council tax bill, the style that you would use there is quite different. Um, if you're looking at doing an apprenticeship, you're going to have to do some academic writing. So again, the way that you write there will be different. Spelling and punctuation is still important, as is grammar. Um, and functional skills English teaches you about listening skills as well as just writing. Um, listening is more is harder than you think. So it's about verbal communication and listening as well. Uh, next slide, please, Rose. So why do we talk about apprenticeships and functional skills together? Um, I again would just like to reiterate the point. I think it's useful for everyone to have a functional skills qualification if you don't have your GCSEs in maths and English. But functional skills are a key part of apprenticeships. Um, they stem from the government agenda of a few years ago, trying to raise the levels of literacy and numeracy in this country. Um, we have shocking levels of literacy and numeracy. A really upsetting amount of adults leave school with literacy and numeracy levels of primary school pupils. Um, and it's really important. I mean, there's obviously the big picture stuff about how do you contribute to the economy? How do you get a good job? But there's something about how are you able to thrive as an individual if you are lacking some of those key skills? So, for functional skills and apprenticeships, every apprenticeship has a certain level of functional skills embedded within it. You cannot complete a an apprenticeship programme unless you have functional skills level one or level two if you don't previously have them. So level two apprenticeships. So level two would be, for example, a healthcare support worker. By the end of that, you need to have functional skills level one if you don't have it already. And a level three apprenticeship and above needs functional skills level two before you can complete it. Um, increasingly, if you're looking at doing a degree apprenticeship, so the TNA is a very popular one in primary care. Lots and lots and lots of universities will ask for you to have your, your functional skills as an entry requirement. So it's always worth, even if you're thinking, mm, it's not really ready for me now, but it's always useful for you to think about, could I spend this time now getting my functional skills? It's a good way for you to get back into the habit of learning. And it's just one thing off the list. If you're trying to study at degree level and do your functional skills at the same time, that can be difficult. So what if you're thinking, I've already got GCSE maths and English, none of this applies to me. I can just sit back, ignore this person going on for the rest of the session. Incorrect. Pay attention for a little bit longer. Um, a university or a training provider will ask you and chase you for evidence. This is not them being mean or picky with you. It's an ESFA funding rule. If they don't have evidence that you've got your GCSE maths and English or that you've obtained functional skills previously, 
um, they can be fined and they can have their ability to deliver apprenticeships removed. So uh, my takeaways from these bits, do you have functional skills equivalent? Do you know where the certificates are? Um, if not, start thinking about that. Uh, next slide, please, Rose. So we talk about equivalence quite a lot. Do you have level two functional skills, maths and English or equivalent? So the most obvious one is GCSE maths and English. So for level two, it needs to be an A star to C, or if you're a bit younger in the new number system, it's nine to four. Um, if you've got an A level or an AS level with maths or English in the title with a minimum grade of E, that will count as equivalent. Um, even if you've got English literature at A level, that will count as equivalent. Um, a couple of others there, O levels for our slightly more mature uh, audience, CSEs. Um, key skills as well were the qualification that was around just before functional skills. So you need communication literacy or application of number. That always really annoys me. It should be applications of number. Um, a pass in those, those will count as equivalents. Um, I know lots of people as well have done an access to HE diploma. Um, this one's a bit trickier. Don't assume that you've done English and maths because you have to have separate credits for those. Um, no, Kelly, a BTEC doesn't count, I'm afraid. Um, if you go to the link I've added there, um, that gives you a slightly confusing spreadsheet that lists the form, everything that can be counted as equivalent. Um, if you're confused about what will be equivalent, let me know and I can sort of navigate that for you. Um, a BTEC doesn't count because you can't do a BTEC in maths or English. Um, lots of people come back and say, well, I've got a degree or I've got a PhD in something. Um, we've done a lot of apprenticeships around advanced practice and you've got people who are very senior and well into their career and they've asked, does this count? And unfortunately it doesn't, even though you can clearly study at that level. Uh, next slide, please, Rose. So this is a bit of a messy um, slide. Design is not one of my skills. I need to do a functional skills qualification in design. So this is really looking at you. Um, so you're thinking about doing an apprenticeship. Do you need your maths and English functional skills or equivalent? So you start in the green box. Do you have that already? If you think it's yes, have you got evidence of that? Yes. Has the HEI seen and accepted the evidence? I'll put HEI, but it might be any training provider. And they've seen that and they've said, yes, that's fine. No further action required. So do you have maths and English? If you're absolutely sure that you don't have that, there are a number of ways that you can achieve your programme. So I'm going to explain this a bit more in detail. Oh, something's just popped up, there we go. Um, you can access adult education learning budget. So that's a fund of money that training providers have to support you to get your functional skills or the training provider or university that you're studying with should be able to direct you. Or you could do the BKSB package, which I'm going to talk about later. This is um, an online resource for you to sort of teach yourself functional skills, maths and English. And then when you've completed that, we've also got an offer where you can complete the exam if you want to sort of organise yourself. Uh, next slide, please, Rose. So, um, you've probably got the memo by now that I think functional skills are for everyone, not just for apprentices. So anyone can study for their functional skills um, as long as you don't already have a qualification in maths or English. Um, you can access that via the adult education learning budget. Um, your local further education college should be able to support you. Um, apprenticeship training providers should be able to support you. Um, and delivery can be a real mix between teach yourself online, for example, with the BKSB package, um, online and in person or in person. So there's something really to support anyone. Um, an average programme and I really hate to use the word average because none of us are average, is about nine to 12 weeks for a level two. But that will really depend on where you are, what your starting point is. Um, just be aware as well if you are 
doing your functional skills as part of an apprenticeship and the college is providing that functional skills programme, you can't then go and source yourself another functional skills programme. Um, you can use the BKSB package though, but again, we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, next slide, please, right? So, water. So, HEE have um, put together some support for individuals working in health and social care to obtain their functional skills. So, we've got BKSB, that's the online platform. It stands for Basic Key Skills Builder and it supports maths, English, and digital skills. And it's all mapped to a functional skills curriculum. So when you first sign up, you do an assessment that tells you where you are at the moment and what level you're at. Functional skills goes from uh, entry level three, entry level two, entry level one, and then it goes to level one and level two. With the BKSB package, it will tell you where you are at the moment and how long it will take you to get to the next level. So if you're entry level three, which is the sort of top of the entry level, it will tell you how much work you need to do in terms of hours or units to get to level one. Uh, so you could use it if you're an individual thinking about your functional skills. You could use it as a sort of study tool if you're having a formal programme or you can just teach yourself. Um, and it also flags the areas of weakness for you to concentrate on. And you can come back once you've done some work on it, come back and assess yourself again. And then once you get to functional skills level one or functional skills level two, you can access the open awards offer that will pay for you to undertake your exam. Um, again, if you want to undertake an exam yourself, talk to uh, local apprenticeship providers, talk to your local FE college, but there will be a charge um, which varies from anything from about £49 through to about £100. It really varies between provider. So next slide, please, Rose. So um, another package that we've partnered with is National Numeracy. Um, so they are an independent charity, independent of the government, that wanted to look at and address lower levels of numeracy amongst adults and children. Um, their real focus as well as an organisation is thinking about maths anxiety. Um, I think in this country, there's a lot of people who just say, oh, I can't do maths, I'm no good at maths, I'm scared of numbers, um, me and maths don't get along. So the programme really addresses what is it that's that blocker in your mind? Is it uh, where you had a poor experience at school? So, for example, I was in the bottom set of maths. I had a lovely teacher who made all kinds of accommodations for me, but largely just left me alone to get on with it. Um, maybe you had a really horrible teacher. Um, the way GCSE maths was taught isn't always the most sensible way. It's more a way of just squashing lots of information in your brain for you to sort of regurgitate exams. So it really tries to look at what makes you anxious about numbers. And again, you can do an assessment much like the BKSB platform, where it flags, these are your strengths, these are your weaknesses, and gives you lovely little bite-sized tasks to work on to improve your confidence and your ability. Um, HG have also funded a numeracy champions programme. So this is really aimed at people um, who are supporting learners with their apprenticeships and functional skills. And again, it's training people out there working in GP practices or training hubs, how to have those supportive conversations about addressing fears around maths. So it's not teaching people how to teach numeracy, it's teaching people how to teach other people to feel less scared of maths, if that makes sense. So next slide, please. So some useful links here about how BKSB and Open Award stick together. Um, if you're interested in signing up your practice or maybe talk to your local training hub about how to join BKSB, um, the National Numeracy Challenge is the National Numeracy Programme. I would always recommend think about things uh, think about the long term view. If you're thinking about doing a functional skills program, have a go at the National Numeracy Challenge first as a way to sort of ease yourself in and get used to practising. Um, if you complete the National Numeracy Challenge, 
that actually takes you up to functional skills level two equivalents. So if you can crack the national numeracy challenge, you're in a really good position to take on your functional skills assessment. Uh, there's a link there as well about HE becoming um, a numeracy champion program. That's really more for employers looking at rather than individuals. Um, and of course, you can always come and ask me if you've got any queries or ask your training hub lead to ask me. Uh, any questions? So, you know, you mentioned entry level three. Mm -hmm. so this, I always get confused with this. So does it start entry one, two, three? Or is it three, two, one? <laughs> three, two, one, one, right. two. One, two. Okay. I have no idea why. Yeah. Okay. So again, another important thing to note. It's always very difficult to think how much information do you give without scaring people off, but to give them all the facts. So if you start an apprenticeship, your training provider and you don't have your functional skills, the training provider will ask you to do an assessment. Now, if you do that assessment and you come out at a level below where you need to be, so, for example, if you need to get functional skills level one with your apprenticeship and you come out at entry level three, there might be some difficulties on you getting in the programme. So that's why I would always say think about your functional skills before you're applying to an apprenticeship. Have a go at the National Numeracy Challenge. Get yourself back into the habit of learning. Um, if you come out at a higher level, because they'll be, they'll be concerned that actually it's too much of a leap from you to go to where you want to go. So really have a look at the National Numeracy Challenge is my main message for today. Shilpa. So two things, one one comment, uh, I, I want to just reiterate that how important functional skills is not just for apprenticeships, but nope. for getting entry level roles because some of the NHS trusts still do a diagnostic for healthcare support worker, jobs and roles and and things like that so i think if you're working with people in the community i think it's quite important that that that's kind of reiterated that some jobs will ask you to do diagnostic test kind of thing um i had a very different question which i think i would face personally uh, so if you have got qualifications from overseas and you, you know how would that affect impact kind of things and, and kind of I think I would need to do functional skills. So we've also got a service at HE where we can look at overseas qualifications. Um, again, as with UK based qualifications, they need to be secondary school level. Um, I'm sure you've got loads of interesting degrees, Shilpa, but I can't tell you what they're equivalent to in functional skills. If you sent me your secondary school qualifications, I can check those against a database and say whether they're equivalent to GCSE, maths and English. I, I think I think the point I'm trying to make is, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, having having a degree and a master's, um, it doesn't matter, I think, uh, for me, uh, I've kind of come across when when individuals, for example, I've worked with many overseas nurses who come from India, for example, um, they kind of are fluent in their English, but when they send the qualification to be checked, generally English doesn't come out as yeah. equivalent, I think. So they still have to repeat their English uh, exams, even though their written and spoken English is perfectly yeah. fine. Uh, maths is is a bit ambiguous. Sometimes uh, the matching services come across, and I think it very much depends on the countries. What what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you know European countries there is a matching equivalent. Sometimes there isn't. So I think it's worth checking through the NAREX. It's not called NAREX anymore, isn't it? What's it it's called? called ENIC. ENIC. ENIC anymore? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. But same. HE provide that service for matching, so that's that's another piece to kind of that's know. What I was just going to ask, yeah, do he still support with the matching to the ENIC, ENIC equivalent? He do. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. We have a hand up from Deepika. 
Yes, so um, to Shilpa's um, question, I was just going to answer quickly as my experience as well. Um, I am one of the people who have who's done the, well, let's say the GCSE levels, um, maths and English back home in Nepal. But um, yeah, when I submitted my documents, my certificates, um, English didn't get accepted. So hence why I did the functional skills English um, level, even though I, I believe I'm okay in English written and spoken. But yeah, um, I think it's one of the, let's say, sort of a requirements that, you know, an English test must be done here because it's for everyone, let's say, even if you want to apply for a citizenship or, uh, you know, uh, leave to remain or anything, English is one of the tests that you have to go through. So I believe... I mean, if you have been here long enough and you've got good English, then it's just something you have to do and um, you'll get through it quite e easily, like how I did myself. Um, there's there's a course there and then you do it. You can do it in college or in online. I preferred online and um, in my own time and I was ready for the exam and I got the exam booked and it was nice and easy, very smooth for me. Just wanted to share that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to come back to you in a moment. Um, there's an excellent question in the chat from Helen. Um, so she's asking, if you don't have a grade C, but um, you're working towards that level, do you have to do the level one first before going trying out the level two test? Um, no, what you would do when you go to BKSB, let's say you're going to teach yourself, or if you went to an actual training provider, again, they will ask you to do an initial assessment. So if you're at the top of entry level three or functional skills level one, most providers will say, actually, we think that you can make it to level two. So they would start you with le at level two. You'll start at a level that's appropriate to your current level of learning or understanding. So again, I'm going to say it again. Have a go at the National Numeracy Challenge, first of all, if you're at maths is your issue. Um, or sign up to BKSB and sort of have a little play around um, with functional skills, uh, as well as knowing the content. There's something about understanding all the questions and knowing how to answer the questions as well. So it's always good to have a practice. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, the tutor who couldn't attend today's session, that was something she was really going to zone in on is the value of doing your practice tests, whether that's paper tests or online. It's the, the practice that seems to be making a difference from her experience as a tutor. So that's a really good point. Thank you, Elaine. Um, just on um, dyslexia and additional uh, learning support, um, we find uh, sometimes people are coming out with entry level three. They believe they have dyslexia, but they've never had a formal diagnosis when they were at school. Is there any support around that? There is. So if you use the BKSB platform to do your initial assessment in either maths or English, um, they can they're not obviously going to give you a formal diagnosis because that would be very inappropriate but they can give you an indication about whether it looks like you've got dyscalculia so that's kind of like the numbers version of dyslexia or you are dys or you're showing dyslexic traits so that's something actually you can go back with and say actually i've done this initial assessment from a recognized program so it will give you an indication it wouldn't say conclusively yes or no, but it's a really good starting point, I think, um, and getting formal assessments um, via a training provider are quite expensive and quite difficult. So at least that's a, um, a good starting point for you. Great, thank you. Um, Elaine mentioned lost certificates in her presentation. <laughs> many, many, many. I'm proud to say I still have my red book. <laughs> my yeah, parents are still your little, your little yeah. thing of uh, progress <laughs> that's it the, the ink has lifted onto the plastics I don't know how useful the certificates are now most people have lost it uh lost them um so on the government website on the link that Elaine put if you navigate through those pages there is actually a um, an area where they mention they 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 list the main examining bodies because you would have to know which examining body you yeah. set your exam with, and it's a bit of a minefield. So they list the main ones on there. So there, yeah. there, is some, there are some links there as well. Also, if you haven't finished school too long ago and your school still exists, you can always 
um, try and get in touch with your school and ask what exams body they would have used whatever year it was that you did your GCSEs. Quite often they do know. They have yeah, the they do know, yeah. Um, uh, Elaine's mentioned BKSB and the fact that you can register and sign yourselves up for it. Um, for the hubs that I support, which are Oxfordshire, Berkshire West, Bucks and Frimley, we do have that support for you so you can sign up through us. Hopefully some of the other training hubs um, have that support or will be looking to do it or they can point you in the right direction. So don't feel alone in that journey. Um, and, and we can help you sit the exams as well through um, an organisation called Open Access. They do invigilated exams like this. That's really if it suits your style. So um, unless there are any other questions, is something in the chat? OK, yeah, that's fine. Um, I'm going to bring in, um, just because I think it's a smooth transition, to Deepika first. Um, so you alluded earlier to your experience with doing your studies um, using a BKSB. So Divka, if you can unmute and share what that experience was like and how you went about gaining your functional skills and what it meant for you in terms of your progression onto your apprenticeship. Hi there. Um, right, so I work as a trainee nurse associate. Well, obviously, I'm doing the apprenticeship at the moment, which started back in December, just only recently. So, um, BKSP has been extremely helpful. You know, I was, to be honest, I was clueless. I wanted to do this apprenticeship, but I wasn't aware of the um, the, the functional skills um, levels of um, qualification that I had to have, even though I've been here for a long while and I thought that's, I didn't think of that at all, so I didn't know where I was. So first of all, um, I was asked to present my certificates from where I am, and which I did, and then it was all navigated uh, very well for me and I had to do the bare minimum, to be honest. All I had to do was just revise. For me, it was like a revision and um, take the test. So, and I was offered after, like I said earlier, after I presented my certificates. Um, sorry, um, at first I started off as a receptionist at the GP surgery and I went on to do a little um, HCA course that didn't require any English level tests or anything. So, um, and then I was offered to do the Nursing Associates Apprenticeship program which I was so enthusiastic to start um, but it threw me back when I when I was told that I had to do this these tests or I had to do this sort of I had to have this sort of qualification to join and but I, I was quickly picked up because after as soon as I um, handed my certificates or I submitted them I was told that maths can be accepted but English um, I have to do the functional skills levels, um, level two I had to do. And uh, I thought, okay, where am I going to do this then? <laughs> do, do I have to pay for it? Where do I go? Um, and then soon after, Kush um, actually got in touch with me saying, okay, we've got this course and um, you've got two choices. You either go to a college nearby uh, or you do it online. And obviously I chose online because I... I, I've got a family to look after, I've got little children, so I thought this is uh, so flexible for me. I would definitely go for the online choice. So I did it at my own time at work when it wasn't too busy. I, I, I did some um, did some of the um, lessons there as well. And um, when I was ready, I did some at home, and when I was ready, I just booked the exam, the test, um, which was also online. and. Um, it went fairly smoothly. At one time, there was um, a time where there weren't enough people for the test because they have to have like three or so at least. Um, but unforeseen circumstances, some people couldn't turn up, so it was postponed. But I had fairly good time for the course to start, so everything was nice and smooth, and I was ready. And I passed. <laughs> so yeah. And here I am now. Amazing, amazing experience, to be honest. Very flexible and smooth for me. So I can, I'm very grateful for it, to be honest. 
Amazing. Thanks for so much. And I realised I had you listed on my sheet as maths, but actually it was English that you did. It was English, yeah. I'm good at maths. <laughs> it was the English. <laughs> and the, and like you said, there were three tests that you had to do. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. That's fantastic, because thank you so much. Um, you know, having studied you studied biology, hadn't you? You had the degree and yes. so yeah. Um, so yeah, I can imagine it's a bit of a shock that you needed to do all this. Um, yeah, but we're yeah, after like fifteen odd years. <laughs> yeah, but we're so pleased. Well, so this is fine. this is a great example of somebody you know who is um, near near enough being able to get the level two qualifications. The the abs absolutely fine with online self directed study. Not everyone's bag though. So this is where I'm going to bring in Rebecca, who is our Frimley Hub apprentice. Rebecca worked in childcare early years for 22 years. Um, didn't uh, didn't quite get the grades at maths, but also knew that you didn't want to do the the online. So you changed your career, didn't you, recently? You used to run your own business and everything. Mm -hmm. So you probably had more skill than you realised. But it was more of a confidence thing, wasn't it? So, Rebecca, if you could share your experiences. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, the thought about having to sort of retake maths was quite a nerve wracking thing for me. Um, well, it was been it's been what 20, 20 plus years since I last studied maths at school. So it was quite daunting, very nervous about doing it. But once I had um, attended the first session, um, my tutor was was really, really good and explained the sessions, how it's run, the processes. Um, he understood completely how nervous I was, was really understanding. Um, he picked up that I'm quite a visual learner. And I think that's what was going on at school wise. Because when you're taught, it's 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 taught very differently to now. So he knew I'm a visual learner and that really, really helped me. Um, I found my confidence. I was comfortable in class. I was unable to kind of join in with the conversations and answer questions, of the activities. Um, I want to say that there's no wrong answers, but obviously with maths, you do get wrong answers. But you are made to feel, you know, to be comfortable, to it's okay to be wrong you know there are wrong answers that's fine and it's the process of why did you get that answer and overcome that um so I think that was my big issue of of kind of being wrong I didn't like having a wrong answer um but yeah that he, he completely guided me it was brilliant um I, I attended weekly online sessions so like every Friday morning I attended online and then with that, I did sort of the programme, the BKSB as well online. But personally, for me, I found that slightly difficult to do the online. Um, I think I'm kind of quite old school. I like pen and paper. So I actually bought myself um, a function skills activity book and, and that just worked for me. But that, that that's me and that's my preference. And then that's why then I chose to to take the paper exam rather than going online. Um, so it took me six months from start to finish and I took my exam just before Christmas and passed. So that's a big tick. And um, yeah, I'm just I'm just really happy, really pleased that I did it now um, to, to think how I was feeling to begin with and what I've achieved now I'm yeah I'm very very grateful for the opportunity so definitely I, I do highly recommend doing it. Brilliant love both of your stories because that just really brings this all to life doesn't it and you know um, what Elaine was saying about confidence really being a barrier for some people and you know you've shown that actually you've come through that journey and through to the other side and your training provider has been really supportive this is um you know a slightly different example where rebecca's been you know we decided that it's okay for rebecca to do her functional skills alongside the program um because rebecca was um, recruited as an apprentice so we were able to feel that could be supported rebecca was fine with that um and so the training provider offered that functional skill support as part of the programme. 
Um, functional skills, when you're learning it as part of your apprenticeship, they're not included in, in the off the job training requirements, but a lot of providers will embed the learning through the, the as they're teaching the modules as well. Just something to be mindful of. It, um, with Deepika's example, you know, to get onto the nursing associate programme with her university, you needed you need the functional skills maths and English at entry. And it is always advisable to try and get it beforehand. Um, the, the tutor who had been on the call actually would have really, she wanted to make the point that trying to study a degree alongside both your maths and your English, or even one of those subjects, it really eats into your work-life balance. And if you're not passing your maths, you've got this stress of not being able to get onto year two of the programme and just everything that comes with that. Hazel, is there anything that you want to add in support of that? Oh, you know me so well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, um, I have had past experiences in, in a previous life, as it were, where I had uh, training nursing associates. They were taken on to the two year foundation degree nursing associate pathway uh, without either one or both of these functional skills in English and maths. And I actually had learners that had got to the end of the course and still hadn't achieved um, their maths and English. So unfortunately, it actually delayed them passing their actual apprenticeship. Um, for those that are in Kent and for those that um, are going to or are enrolled with Canterbury Christchurch University, it's a must. They actually will not accept you onto the training nursing associate pathway unless you have your maths and English because it's a little, it's quite an intense apprenticeship. So um, in order to alleviate and to make sure that you can actually completely focus on your apprenticeship, it's good to undertake the maths and English first. It's also a stepping stone. It gives you some self-confidence, some self-belief um, and actually paves the way one step at a time to achieve your ultimate goal at the apprenticeship at the end. So that's my own personal take on it anyway. Absolutely. I'm going to hand over to Rose now from Sussex Training Hub. So there is a slide coming. Um, so it's really just um, a bit of a close to the to the session, really, just about how, what you might want to do next, um, who you need to contact. So this slide just gives you um, an overview of contact details for each of the hubs. Um, you'll see on there there's web links to each of our sites as email addresses. Um, so do get in contact. We're here to help. We're here to kind of signpost and support in any way we can in trying to identify what the best route for you as an individual might be. Um, I also know that I'd be happy to talk, you know, with any practices more widely about sort of promoting um, functional skills. As Elaine has said, it'd be really good to have it sort of raise up the agenda so that people are thinking about it really early on. Um, so I know we're all passionate about kind of that that sort of agenda. So um, yeah, so all details are on there. Um, and I think Kush, you've noted in the chat that you're going to send or you, if you want copies of the slides, then just let Kush know um, and they can be emailed out. Um, I, I would also really recommend it. Uh, looking at the HASO website, the link I've put in there, because there's loads of stuff about skills for life generally in there, not just your functional skills. Yeah, it's a brilliant, brilliant website. Yeah, once again, thank you, everybody. Um